Hi, welcome back. I'm, uh, I just unpacked this plane and I'm just doing a little cleanup, really uh, just with some WD-40 to uh, lubricate some of the spots and to do a little dusting. I like to use WD-40 on these things because it uh, takes off whatever um, dust there is and adheres it to this and doesn't do any damage to a, an iron plane. And uh, that's the top priority in any of this is not to do any damage. So this is just uh, hopefully gonna make it clearer for you to see the plane that I'm working on. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about it. It's kind of an exciting one because they are apparently fairly rare. So let me put this down and let me show off this, uh, this plane to you and, and what it's all about. So I took some of these other planes out for you to see. This is the, uh, this is the uh, 289 that we were talking about. This is the new plane. And, and these are some 78s. This is an earlier 78, and this is a, uh, a newer 78. Also not very new, but newer. And they, you can see how these things change over the time. Um, and, but that's not why I brought these two out. I brought these two out, these 78s, so that you could see the differences between the 278, I mean the 78s, and the 289. Now, the uh, 78s, they're called a duplex uh, rabbit and philister plane. And the reason is, for the duplex, is you see on the back here, there are two spots for the iron to go in. So if you want to come up almost like a bullnose plane and get closer to your work, you can move the iron up here. Now, a lot of people think that this is missing an iron and a, and, a, and a cap, but it's not. This is the way it was sold, and you would just switch them depending on your use. You wouldn't use the two at the same time. The other thing about this plane that's similar is you see there's a hole here and a hole on this side to hold the uh, stem for the fence. So the fence itself is uh, able to be used on either side and I believe they refer to that as ambidextrous. So um, there are some other differences that we need to get into though, and the biggest of them is the fact that this plane here has a skewed iron. If you notice on the 78s, the iron goes straight across, perpendicular to the direction of the sole. The iron is straight across. But on the uh, 289, it's called skewing, and the blade is on an angle. Um, the, the purpose of that is to go cross grain to make that easier cutting and against on some harder woods. Uh, now I don't have this uh, too tight, any of this, I've just sort of put it together for this show and uh, we'll go through a little bit more about it. Now, if you're looking to buy this plane, one of the things to keep in mind is ha does it have all of the accessories that you need? The depth stop, the screw that holds the depth stop in. Can you switch out the fence? Is the fence uh, there? Is it proper? Can you switch out the fence for 78? You cannot. The reason is, you see the size of this shaft, it's much wider than the one on the 78. See the difference there? The other thing, is if you notice the position of where the hole for the rod on the 78 on the, uh, for the fence on the 78 is, compared to this one here, you see this one's much further forward on the duplex. It's positioned almost up in this area here between the two, between the two blades. And the 78, if you'll notice, has the front of the fence much longer than the rear. And, um, and this is also an issue with a, a, a plane called a 278, which is another iron body, Philister. And uh, a lot of times you'll find it with this 78 fence because 78s were made so uh, in such multitude that those planes were readily available and easy to find, those uh, fences, but the ones for the 278 are not. So once one goes missing, it's very hard to find them. And the same thing with the uh, 289. 
So the big difference here is the size of the rod here, much larger than on the 78, and the fact that this here, the fence, is um, more equal than that. You see, there's, they're not exactly the same length, but they're much closer than with the 78. You see the big difference in that. So it's, it's hard to come by these planes complete with everything there. That's an important thing to look for when you're, uh, when you're uh, buying one of these. The other difference is if you notice this cutter here is on an angle like this as opposed to straight up and down. Now, on the 78, um, let me see if I can find a nice clear shot. On the 78, it has a different spur, and uh, it's the circular one with a screw in the middle, and there's three cutters, one at the top, one on the side, and the other side. You just flip it around, and you have three options. So if one gets dull, you can switch it around. Whereas on the other one, it's just the cutter is a two-ended cutter, or single cutter, and you can flip it up out of the way for you. But you see, it's only got one cutter. It's a circle around the screw and one cutter rather than the one, two, and the three. And the spur is on both sides of the plane. I'm going to turn these around so that the two of them are facing each other and uh, see if I can show you that the 78 is, maybe this is the best way to do it, is much thinner than the 289. So the, uh, the 289 is, uh, well, they had two different widths for the cutters. This is a, a, a funny thing because the body, I think, was the same, but they're saying that the, uh, the, that the cutter itself is, in the early ones, was an inch and three quarter wide. And then after 1935, which is strange, why they changed that specifically, they went to an inch and seven eighths for the width. Um, the 78, the width is only an inch and a half wide for the cutter. And um, the length is the same. It's eight and a half inches. And the same thing on this one is eight and a half inches long for the sole. Now, the 78 is a much older uh, designed plane. The 78, the duplex, was made from 1884 to 1984. That's 100 years, and it's still in use, and I think it might still be manufactured in England uh, by the Stanley Company, but I'm not sure. But the 289 was only from 1911 to 1948, so not as, uh, as long a run at all by any means as the 78, and not as popular. They were higher priced, not by a lot, but today, they're worth a lot more to collectors and uh, complete, they're worth even more. They have some things in common. The, uh, the Bodmer's patent is the uh, patent for these iron filsters in the uh, construction of them. Um, and, and this design goes throughout a lot of the iron planes, um, the, the whole casting method and everything else. In uh, uh, Bodmer changed the, uh, the design, the spurs on this in 1910, um, whereas the 78s have Trout's patent um, and, uh, and another, Campbell's uh, original design for the seating of the way that the iron is. So, so the, the historians will go over that a little closer than I'm going to be able to go in this little short video. Um, but uh, the sides on both are ground flat so that you can use the plane on its side if you like. Um, and, uh, and those are some things that are similar. Let's take this apart and take a look at some so of the pieces. I'm going to drop the fence off. Very simple. Not the fence, the depth stop. 
sometimes when I'm doing these videos, I, I get a little tongue-tied and I, I say the wrong thing and it's, and it's uh, just an error on my part. Uh, so, so there you see that cutter and uh, the spur and the way that it, it works there. And you can see the length of this, the early design of the uh, script. So now let's take the fence off and uh, set that aside. And the rod has the hole in the end for putting some tension on it. I had somebody that responded that uh, that's the only purpose that it had, but uh, I think that you could also put in there a, uh, a cotter pin and that would prevent when you're using the plane that from falling off and breaking because these are cast and they will, they will break. So there's one of the cutters is up and out of the way. This is how I got it. And the other one is down and, and fairly well used up, unfortunately. So I might switch them out depending on the piece. <coughs> the uh, cap iron is skewed as it has to be because so is the iron. This happens to be a sweetheart iron. So that tells you the period of the plane. And now we're stripped down to basically the body. I'm gonna leave the spurs in there. You see you have the, uh, the screw here for the, uh, for the thumb screw for your depth stop. Depth stop can be put on this side or it can be used on this side. And there's the alternating screw for the depth stop if you use it on that side. Hole here and hole here for your fence. Now. Because this is skewed, this fence, if you put it here on this side, you see it comes a little more forward. On this side here, the fence gets turned around and you have the longer side on this side here um, to compensate for the rods being in alternating distance from the front. Now, the other thing is, and it's interesting about this plane, is that somebody drilled and threaded a hole here. And I don't know what the thread yet is on it. I have to check. But we are assuming in a discussion on uh, plane talk that somebody probably wanted a handle there for some reason when they were using it. But um, the, the, the iron, the, the plane is... In, in very nice condition. It just needs to be dusted and cleaned up a little bit and oiled. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna sharpen up the iron and we're gonna take it into the shop and see how it does. The way I like to set the blade is I put it on the piece of wood, then I release this and then I maneuver the blade up and down until it touches. And that's when I know that it's actually giving me the full distance across. Then I can come back and check down and sight the blade looking down to make sure that I haven't overdone one side versus the other. So as tricky as it is to get the blade set, the other thing is that because the way this keyhole is, you have to pull this back when you tighten it. Makes it kind of awkward, but it's not only giving me a nice shaving, but it's giving me a nice flat surface here. And of course, I can set the depth stop to the depth that I want for that. I started fresh on a new board here. Set the blade, I hope, correctly. This doesn't have any wobble. It has a tilt to it, a little tilt to it. So it's a little awkward to hold. There's, I can see why they wanted a handle up here because there's, there's no really good place to hold it. I guess I could do it in the front, but that uh, strikes me as a little difficult because I'm wanting you to be able to see the cut. Um, so it's, that's a, it's a little awkward. Let me set this depth stuff down a little bit. 
and um, we'll try a little bit more. I'm a little afraid I've got to put my hand in front uh, for you to see what this is doing, but you can see it's a good shaving and it's a good flat surface. It's just a heavy duty plane that you have to really kind of maneuver. This hand is the hard one. Uh, but here you can see the shavings, you can see the uh, rebate. It's just awkward, a little clunky. But I think if you're good and deliberate with your movement, it gives you a good shaving, a good clean shoulder, and a nice flat surface there. It's just big, it's clunky. The front part here is awkward. I totally understand now why somebody tapped that hole to put a handle on. So let's see how it does on long grain. Now that is set way too deep. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen this up a hair. I'm gonna bring the iron back just till it nicely touches. And we'll see how that, what kind of a shaving we're getting. It's a little thick, but it's leaving a really nice surface. Still, difficult to set the depth of the blade and maneuvering this, so it, it's not the nicest one to work with, but I'll bet it would make a great shooting plane. Yeah.